The current chip crisis, or Chipageddon, started in 2019 with storms and power cuts affecting a number of major chip manufacturing centres in America, causing them to temporarily pause production and reduce supply. But then of course Covid hit. With hundreds of thousands of people across the world suddenly working from home, demand for computers and chips sharply rose, whilst at the same time production capacity decreased. It's estimated that the supply issue has caused major production delays for lots of different industries, ranging from automotive to medical. It's expected that this problem will last till at least the end of this year. So what does all this have to do with DIY BMS? For hobbyist engineers and developers, getting hold of genuine parts in small quantities has been really difficult. If we take a look at the DIY BMS current monitor, it uses four different chips. You can quickly scan the market for availability using services like Octoparts, although this doesn't include the Far East suppliers like LCSC. As you can see, zero stock anywhere and months of delays until parts are available. I started to look at redesigning the current monitor to use different components, but it turned into a whack-a-mole situation where one part would be in stock one week but gone the next. Ultimately, the current monitor is dependent on the INA228 chip, so I gave up trying to optimise the design using other parts because the availability of that part is so poor. The controller has also been affected by this global chip problem. It uses several chips, but the existing design needs two of these to power up correctly. These two chips control the input and outputs, like the relays and the LEDs. What I've attempted to do is to remove these two chips and replace them with a single chip, which not only re reduces the part count, it also hopefully makes it where we can actually build these things. I've made an experimental design using the uh, 6416 uh, chip, which replaces both of the existing ones. This isn't going to be the holy grail answer though, as this chip can also be difficult to find. I managed to get some from LCSC. What I've also seen is that there are silly prices for chips which are in stock, like the Canvas chip for, in, for example, retailing for over $9 when previously this, this chip was less than three. RS485 chips do appear to be available, but you may need to explore devices not on the bill of materials for the controller. Just make sure they run at 3.3 volts and have the same footprint. The controller doesn't actually need the CAN bus or RS485 chips to power up and operate. These chips are only used to communicate with other devices, uh, like the Victron inverters or the current monitor. However, just before you rush to the buy it now button, this change is still very much experimental and definitely not ready for use. I have not received my prototype circuit boards from JLC PCB yet, and have not written a single line of code to support this different chip. So it's possible that the electrical design is riddled with bugs. I'm giving you a preview of what may be in the pipeline and also letting you know that research and development continues even in these difficult times. It's worth pointing out that this isn't an upgrade to the controller and it doesn't have any significant improvements over the previous controller boards. So if you have a working one, stick with it. Something else I've been taking a look at is the design for an all-in-one monitoring board. A number of people have asked for a single board design which can be connected to all the battery cells using a sim single cable. I've drawn up an experimental circuit using the LTC6803. Uh, this is based on its reference design. Once again, this chip is out of stock almost everywhere, so this isn't going to be a scalable solution until the chip shortage ends. I was lucky enough to find a few of these chips on AliExpress. The LTC chip is an all-in-one voltage monitoring and balance device and can monitor 12 cells with a single chip. The chip can also be stacked together, providing another 12 cell monitoring capability. So theoretically, this can then support hundreds of cells. Again, I'm still waiting for parts and PCBs to arrive before I can look at building this for real. And then I still need to write the code to actually make it work. Okay, uh, I re realize that so far I've been a bit doom and gloom, but I've also been busy improving the controller software. A few minor changes and fixes have been introduced. For users who are using InfluxDB, you can now configure the, the delay between the data points being uploaded. I've also fixed an issue with using the pulse mode on the relay outputs. Pulse mode is designed to trip isolators and contactors, which need a short spike of voltage to trigger. And finally, you can now configure the frequency at which the, the controller requests voltage readings from the modules. I've called this the interpacket gap. If you have a large installation, and by that I mean over 60 modules, then you may benefit from tweaking the delay between voltage readings. 
This can help to reduce lost packets and data errors. If you do reduce the delay, keep an eye on the send queue length. This is the number of module requests waiting to be sent out. Ideally, you want this value to be as low as possible. After the controller has been running for a few minutes, the queue length should be near zero. It will be much higher after initial power up whilst the uh, controller interrogates the modules. Just a reminder that if you are thinking of ordering circuit boards from JLC PCB, please use my referral link below to support the channel. You can also get a discount using the code JLC Stewart. So that's a quick update on what I've been working on over the past few weeks. Thanks for watching.